morning everyone. It's nice to see you on this bright and cheery day, especially if you were a Scotland rugby fan yesterday. Commiserations if there are any Welsh individuals in the congregation, but it's good to see you all here today. Warm welcome to our Zoomers as well. It's lovely to have you with us here today, and we know that you're with us in spirit and online. As usual, there is tea and coffee served downstairs in the cafe um, after the service, and everyone is warmly invited to that time of fellowship. And a welcome to you if you're a visitor here, or if indeed you are a family member, as George Ferrin is. Today there will be a retiring offering, which will be uplifted in aid of the Turkey Syria earthquake appeal. Um, which is by the Disasters Emergency Committee. Um, we'll also be holding one next week because we, we recognise that you wouldn't have necessarily come down to church expecting there to be a retiring offering today. So today if you're able, or next week um, if you're able to. And if you prefer, you can also do that online. If you go onto the church's website, um, you'll see a link which you can use um, for the Disasters Emergency Committee. And if you're a taxpayer, of course, you can also um, indicate that you um, can gift aid your donation. After the service today, there will be a messy church planning meeting, and uh, that takes place in the large hall after the, the service. So bring your tea and coffee with you. And on Tuesday, you'll see there the Kirk session meet, meets on, uh, on the 14th at 7.30 p.m. Beneath that, an appeal um, which says we are looking for volunteers to help with delivery meals to the elderly and housebound, especially on a Friday. Um, the delivery takes about half an hour, um, round about between 11 and 12 noon. So if you're able to help, can you please get in touch with the cafe management team or contact the church office. These are all the church notices. Now let us worship God as we sing to his praise and glory. Mission praise 249. How lovely on the mountains.
chapter 10, verse 15, the Lord says, Can an axe claim to be greater than the one who uses it? Is a saw more important than the one who saws with it? Let us pray. God of all life and each life, you are the light of minds that seek to know you, the strength of those who seek to serve you. You reveal the truth to those who search for you. In worship, we pause in your presence, resting from our work and responsibilities, from our worries and distractions. We come to enjoy your presence and to praise you for the gift of life in Christ and creation. Receive our prayers and our praise today, for we open our hearts in love and loyalty to you. God, who is all in all, you call us to choose life and to walk in your ways. But we are tempted by shortcuts and easy solutions. You ask us to turn from anger and settle our differences. But we cling to grievances and point fingers of accusation at others. You ask us to be true to our word, but we prefer to keep everyone happy. Forgive us, O oh God, for sins of action and inaction, sins of anger and pride, of quick judgment and misplaced loyalty. Send us your spirit of grace and truth, love and mercy, compassion and forgiveness. And give us courage to walk humbly in the narrow paths which lead to eternal life. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now just up on the screen, we sing together, Jesus Christ is waiting. Thank you. 
ask George Fennan to come forward as he is going to read our Old and New Testament lessons. The Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 10, verses 5 to 19. The Lord said, Assyria, I use Assyria like a club to punish those with whom I am angry. I sent Assyria to attack a godless nation, people who have made me angry. I sent them to loot and steal and trample on the people like dirt in the streets. But the Assyrian emperor has his own violent plans in mind. He is determined to destroy many nations. He boasts, every one of my commanders is a king. I conquered the cities of Kalno and Kashemish, the cities of Hamath and Arpad. I conquered Samaria and Damascus. I stretched out my hand to punish those kingdoms that worship idols. Idols more numerous than those of Jerusalem and Samaria. I have destroyed Samaria and all its idols. I will do the same to Jerusalem and the images that are worshipped there. But the Lord says, when I finish what I am doing on Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, I will punish the emperor of Syria for all of his boasting and all of his pride. The emperor of Syria boasts, I have done it all myself. I am strong and wise and clever. I wiped out the boundaries between nations and took the supplies that they had stored. Like a bull, I have trampled on the people who live there. The nations of the world were like a bird's nest, and I gathered their wealth as easily as gathering eggs. Not a wing fluttered to scare me off, no beak opened to scream at me. But the Lord says, Can an axe claim to be greater than the man who uses it? Is a saw more important than the man who saws with it? A club doesn't lift up a man. A man lifts up a club. The Lord Almighty is going to send disease to punish those who are now well fed. In their bodies there will be a fire that burns and burns. God, the light of Israel, will become a fire. Israel's holy God will become a flame which in a single day will burn up everything, even the thorns and thistles. The rich forests and farmlands will be totally destroyed. In the same way that a fatal sickness destroys a man, there will be so few trees left that even a child will be able to climb them. New Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26. Jesus said, You have heard that people were told in the past, Do not commit murder. Anyone who does will be brought to trial. Whoever calls his brother, you good for nothing, will be brought before the council. And whoever calls his brother a worthless fool will be in danger of going to the fire of hell. So if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar, go at once and make peace with your brother, and then come back and offer your gift to God. If someone brings a lawsuit against you, 
and takes you to court. You settle the dispute with him while there is time before you get to court. Once you are there, he will hand you over to the judge, who will hand you over to the police, and you will be put in jail. There you will stay, I tell you, until you pay the last penny of your fine. Thank you, George. We now sing Mission Praise 625. Take time to be holy. As we consider the pain and suffering of our world, remind us that there is nothing which can separate us from your love, as revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Today we pray for all the victims of the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, homes, and livelihoods, for all those living in temporary shelters awaiting relief from the cold, for those who still wait for news, praying for the best outcome but expecting the worst. And we pray for the emergency workers and aid agencies that they may still find survivors amidst the scenes of devastation. Help us to play our part in alleviating the suffering of so many. Again today, we pray
pray for all refugees and those suffering as victims of war in our world. And as we think about the war in Ukraine, we remember that the evil of war has ravaged so many countries around the globe. Grant to world leaders and all in positions of power the wisdom and the courage to do what is right in your sight. Kindle again in us a love of our neighbour, a passion for justice to prevail, and a renewed recognition that we all play a part in peace. In a world marred by injustice, help us to be mindful that we are all created equal in your sight and accept our deep regret that inequality and discrimination are still part of daily life. Where the church is divided by squabbling or deep disagreement, where Christians emphasize difference instead of seeking unity in Christ, where we put energy into guarding tradition and forget our calling to go into the world to make disciples, transform us, and make all things new. Help us also to remember that you want us to be good stewards of your creation, living responsibly in all the earth. May all future growth be sustainable and may we ensure that its abundance is fairly shared for the good of all. Heavenly Father, help us to, in our daily struggles, our nagging doubts, our family concerns, our private worries and constant burdens. Bless the members of our congregation here in Pathhead, and be with those whose foundations have been shaken by bereavement, illness or trauma. Grant to us all strength for today and hope for tomorrow, in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together on the screen, when I needed a neighbour, were you there?
31st of January this year, the headline in the Daily Record read, Falkirk school staff reporting five assaults a day, new figures show. Reports of assaults on staff have increased by almost 1,000% since 2018. A freedom of information request is highlighted. So Jesus' teaching on anger seems as relevant today as it has ever been. Less than a month ago, all the news channels reported on the horrific video of an attack on a girl in a classroom in Fife. This attack has raised fears about violence in schools across the country. A clip shared widely on social media shows an altercation between two students at Wade Academy. One girl is seen dragging another off on a chair and onto the floor before repeatedly punching and kicking her. The incident took place the same day that a male pupil was left unconscious in another assault. Police Scotland said that it was aware of both attacks at the school in Anstruther. A survey by the Educational Institute of Scotland, the country's largest teachers union, highlighted a perceived rise in violence in the classroom. More than 600 members in Aberdeen found almost 3 in 10 had been physically assaulted in the 2021-2022 session. In November, teachers at a high school in Glasgow went on strike after raising concerns over violent and abusive behaviour by pupils. David Andres, a professor of history at the University of Portsmouth, once said, As a historian and as a teacher, I am always trying to get people to understand that societies in general are violent and hierarchical places. People like you and me have wanted societies to be less violent and hierarchical and we have worked at that. We've never actually succeeded. We've managed to persuade people to take their foot off of other people's throats when they felt secure enough. Thinking of the violent actions we see in our world, we can be lulled into thinking that we would never be guilty of such terrible things. But I'm sure that all of us can remember times when we've become angry and the red mist has descended. We often read such things about footballers and other sportsmen and women. But we also know that it happens in the office and on the factory floor. It happens in the playground and in the boardroom. It sometimes happens in the church. And sadly, it happens in the home environment too, often with horrific consequences for those who suffer physical or mental abuse. It is true that anger is like a fire. <clears throat> Someone once said of anger, it can warm and stimulate, but it can also consume and destroy. Discipline and controlled anger is a valuable friend. Neglected and unrestrained, it is a devastating enemy. No one can toy with it without getting his fingers burned. Sometimes there are cases when anger can be put to good use. Abraham Lincoln might never have granted freedom to the slaves if he hadn't been filled with anger about the horrendous way we were being treated. Without the anger resulting from the Japanese invasion of Pearl Harbor, America might never have entered the Second World War. And perhaps there are parallels today with Ukraine. 
Very often, new laws, new reforms and advances in safety regulations are the direct result of anger over the inadequacy of existing regulations. As someone has observed, anger, when it is properly motivated, rightly directed and carefully controlled, can be an asset. Perhaps one of the weaknesses of our country today is the lack of anger in the face of present evils. Too few are angry enough to speak out against injustice. Too few want to do anything significant to tackle social evils. The political motivation of the 60s seems to have been replaced by widespread apathy. Many organisations and institutions, not to mention churches, are crippled by apathy. They lack the consuming passion to change people's attitudes and outlooks in our society. Maybe it's just that people fear getting themselves stirred up because they know that anger can be a dangerous and a potent force. The problem with anger is that only God's anger is 100% holy and pure. In the reading from Isaiah this morning, God's anger is viewed as an instrument of his righteous judgment against those who worship false gods. God's judgment is described as a holy flame because in biblical terms, fire was always a symbol of cleansing. Fire was used to refine gold. It was used to prevent a wound becoming septic. Or in extreme cases, fire would be used to prevent the spread of disease within a community. But God's wrath was always viewed as the final option. Time and again throughout the Bible, God makes the effort to plead with his people rather than punish them. However, it is obvious that anger alone wasn't enough to command the Israelites' loyalty. And it didn't prevent them from sinning again and again as soon as punishment was over. <clears throat> Institutions like the prison service know from experience that punishment is effective only when it brings about a positive change in behaviour. Even God's anger with his wayward people had to be carefully controlled. Of course, the worst form of anger is that which leads to murder. And Jesus couldn't be any clearer when he said, you have heard that people were told in the past, do not commit murder. Anyone who does will be brought to trial. But now I tell you, whoever is angry with his brother, or indeed her sister, will be brought to trial. And whoever calls his brother or his sister a worthless fool will be in danger of going to the fire of hell. Anyone who thinks that living the Christian life is easy should try to see how easy it is to keep a tight rein over one's mouth 24 hours a day. By saying this, Jesus isn't just referring to members within a family. In the context of the Christian life, everyone without fail is a brother or a sister. I would say that just from time to time, it's a valuable exercise to go over in your mind, to ask yourself whether there's anyone who has caused you to utter an unkind word or even think an unkind thought. Sometimes it can cause quite a shock just to realize how often our temper rises with very little provocation. There are even those who boast about their quick temper who pride themselves in giving others a piece of their mind. Well, I like the saying which says, every time you give someone a piece of your mind, you make your head 
a little emptier. But more importantly, these people forget that they are putting their mortal souls in danger. That's what Jesus says in this passage. Jesus teaches us that we must nip our anger in the bud before it causes lasting damage. Indeed, before it causes eternal damage. We only have to look at media headlines to realise the value of Jesus' teaching. Imagine the misery tennis player Nick Kyrgios could have saved himself over the years if he had just managed to control his temper. He could have saved himself suspensions, disciplinary hearings, fines and court appearances had he kept his temper under control. Just over a week ago, a court rejected his claim that an assault on his ex-girlfriend could be rejected on mental health grounds. But he escaped punishment only because the judge ruled that it was low-level aggression. Nevertheless, his reputation as a decent human being has been greatly diminished by his behaviour. Celebrities can pay a high price for not keeping their anger under control, even if that price is not measured in Australian dollars or British pounds. But we all know that temper tantrums aren't just confined to children and celebrities. Friends fall out over misunderstandings. Neighbours fall out when there is a difference of opinion. Families fall out over things which rightfully belong to the dim and distant past. Punch-ups occur when someone says something inappropriate at the wrong moment. And sadly, as we all know, murders are committed when anger goes unrestrained. When humans fail to control their anger, they can end up in a prison cell. Jesus highlights the folly of such behaviour and offers the following solution. If you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar, and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there, make peace with your brother, and then come back and offer your gift to God. How would Jesus get that idea across in today's setting? Maybe he would have said something like this. If you are in church, in the middle of a service, and the offering is about to be dedicated, then suddenly you remember that someone has been hurt by what you have said. Leave the church at once and put it right. Don't even wait until the service is ended. Sort out your differences first. Then come back and dedicate your offering to God. Well, I hope that nobody feels a sudden urge to disappear for a moment. But as you listen to that interpretation, you might have been thinking, it just wouldn't happen. Nobody would ever do such a thing because it would be admitting a sense of guilt and it would be too embarrassing to publicly walk out of a place of worship. Well, in Jesus' day, it would have been just as embarrassing to leave the altar as you were about to make a sacrifice as it would to leave the church just as you were about to dedicate your offering. When analysed from a Jewish perspective, you get something of the force of Jesus' words. Jesus is saying, it's not enough simply to refrain from killing people. We must not even be angry with them or even call them a fool. In fact, the mere suggestion of thinking such things must be banished from our minds. 
Clearly, Jesus' words indicate that our worship remains incomplete as long as someone remains injured by our words or our deeds. When such things happen, we must take every reasonable step to restore a broken relationship. Because the implication seems to be that if we don't get it sorted out in this lifetime, it will be sorted out by a higher court. Only the judgment may not be as favourable as our offended brother or sister might have been. For in heaven there is one who can judge not only actions, but also the original thoughts and motives which caused the problem in the first place. And that's why in church, Sunday by Sunday, we offer prayers of confession to God. It gives us the chance to recognise our sins and the hurt, intentional or otherwise, which we might have caused to others. And it also provides the opportunity to receive God's forgiveness. Jesus teaches us that the first step towards a right relationship with God begins with a right relationship with those who are around us, who are sitting next to us. The lesson is quite simple. God will be at peace with us if we are at peace with our fellow human beings, whoever they might be. Jesus then highlights an example in law which people should learn today. If someone threatens you and to take you to court and you know that you're in the wrong, sort the matter out there and then while there's still time. Jesus' words are as true now as they were then. An out-of-court settlement is far easier than facing the full force of the law. As it says in the game of Monopoly, the judge has the authority to say, go directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect £200. It doesn't take much imagination to realise that God is the ultimate judge. And the time that we have to set and settle our disputes is the time that we have now here on earth. For that place of confinement is known as hell. And the minimum duration of the sentence is eternity. So then, let us live at peace with God by remaining at peace with those around us. May all our words be gentle and all our thoughts be loving and kind. Amen. We now sing the doxology as the offering is brought forward for dedication. It's found at Mission Phrase 557. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. places of life, with the knowledge that you are always by our side. As we travel this earthly pilgrim pilgrimage with its joys and sorrows, help us to be more conscious of our blessings, that we in turn may learn to be a blessing to others. 
so take our offering as a sign of our discipleship and use it in the service of your kingdom to the glory of your most holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now conclude our worship as we sing mission phrase 143, find the good fight. <laughs> Thank you.